seen that, Congressman. Okay, well, let me just, I'll, Mr. Chairman, I ask you unanimous consent this be placed in the record uh, at this time. It, it's, without you know, objection. It's already in our information, but I want to make sure it's in the record at this yeah, point. Without objection, so ordered. Uh, and I apologize, it's December 17th, I believe it was delivered. Uh, it would not probably uh, surprise you to know that uh, it actually, on page 6, it lays out those, uh, those bonuses. Mr. Bernanke, Mr. Paulson had that uh, on those days in December. Had you been in the room when this was delivered, in other words, you, the SEC, would you have then been aware of the failure of the proxy in time to at least begin action at that point in December? Well, um, I guess you would have to know exactly what was said in the proxy and then compare that to the information that was then available. But, but you knew that. Yeah, you have compliance people. You, you are hand in hand and you get paid to make sure that the public is protected throughout the process of a merger. So let me ask you the real question. We're the Government Oversight Committee. And it's a double entendre because we, we oversee the government. We're also the government entity that oversees a number of things that are outside the government. But in this case, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, and the SEC, as I understand it through testimony again and again, the SEC was locked out of this process during that time and did not get into the process until January. Isn't that correct? You were not. Your agency was not informed of what the Fed was doing or the Treasury was doing. And you were not at these meetings. You were conspicuous in your absence, right? I understand that's correct, yes. So from a standpoint of the Security Exchange Commission, the respect the Treasury and the Fed should show in the future, shouldn't you be at the table if tens of billions of dollars of taxpayers' money are being thrown in to complete a merger, and at the moment that a, an executive, a party, says, I'm looking at the MAC clause. I'm looking at breaking up this because things have changed or things were not disclosed or we have learned something. Wouldn't that, in your opinion, be an absolute mandate for the Security Exchange Commission to be in the room from that time forward? Well, uh, Congressman, I think if it was a matter that impacted on the SEC's jurisdiction or responsibilities with respect to shareholder disclosure, regulation of the securities markets, uh, the answer would be yes. Now I'm going to ask you a hypothetical, but it's not much of a hypothetical. If you had been in the room on December uh, 17th, 18th, 19th, if you had been in the room when they said, this is not going to go forward because there have been material adverse effects, and on top of that you were aware of misstatements in the proxy, would you have interjected at least your oversight, your opinion, and your demand that compliance to to law be adhered to, which it wasn't? Well, um, uh, I mean, I'm not sure that I would have commented on whether or not a MAC clause was properly invoked or not. Um, uh, well, but we've already had testimony that if they invoke the MAC, they have to go back to the, to the stockholders. Correct. And the, the, the federal government came in with $20 billion. And there's some debate about whether it was forced on B of A or B of A demanded it. Regardless of which one that is, at that point when there's new money, a MAC clause, or money in lieu of, and on top of that, material misinformation in the proxy, shouldn't you be in the room? And more importantly, if you are in the room, wouldn't you have acted to at least advise, the, and let's assume you're willing to take on, the Fed chairman and uh, the Secretary of the Treasury? that in fact they're crossing lines at that point that should not be crossed. They are failing to disclose to the very stockholders, the public, that you protect? Well, if, if those events triggered a disclosure obligations, we, we would certainly communicate that. For Christ's sake, we've had five, six hearings. Mr. Kucinich has dedicated probably a whole wall of his library to this very question, and you're saying if? Let's go back again. They failed to disclose these bonuses. It became aware, the Fed and the uh, Treasury became aware of that. They also became aware that these losses were mounting. And through a negotiation behind closed doors in which you were locked out, they negotiated additional money, now repaid, but additional money to make B of A go through with this deal or to encourage or, in fact, on their, their demand to have them go through. So all of that occurred with your agency locked out of the room. Are you going to tell me today if there was something to be reported, or are you going to say 
like Sheila Bear that was here earlier, yes, I would like to have been in the room, and if I had been in the room or when I was in the room, I wish I had said or done more. Which is it? Are you going to say the SEC should darn well be in the room and be uh, protecting stockholders, or are you going to say if, if, if today? Which one is it? No, I'm sorry. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. Um, I think I did. My, yes, you did. <laughs> it's very clear. Um, my only point was that um, uh, we would certainly like to be in the room any time. There are discussions that go on that affect shareholders and the entities and individuals that we regulate and protect. My, my only point was a more modest one, whether or not discussions about invoking a MAC clause necessarily trigger disclosure obligations under the federal securities laws. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman, for your Thank indulgence. You. I think we, we made the point that Mr. Kucinich and I have both been wanting to make, and, and I look forward to we continuing to follow up on it. Yield back. Right.